Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at my entire Lego room. I honestly don't think we've done this since December 2021, so it's been a year. That's wild. Yeah, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at every single Lego set in this room. That includes everything on the shelves and also everything in the Lego city. We've got lots to cover, so let's get started. So we're gonna break the room overview up into three different sections. The first will be the Lego city. The second will be the Lego shelves. The parts inventory and my desk will be the third and final section. 2022 was a pretty big year for the Lego city. It went through a ton of changes like converting everything to mills plates and also a brand new massive table layout. In fact, the entire Lego room changed in 2022 because we used to have the shelves going around the entire perimeter of the Lego city. We built all new tables, we came up with an all new layout and we essentially rebuilt everything onto mills. Now, before we get started with this Lego city overview, I just wanna let you know that we are nowhere near complete the Lego city. In fact, there are more things under construction than which are complete. But we do have the ground line going right now, which is awesome. And also the newly installed raised train track as well. Both are still under construction and not complete, but they are operational. Specifically, the raised train track is gonna get an upgrade to its tracks and supports here in the very near future. I've just been waiting for a brick link order to arrive for quite some time and it is officially missing. So yeah, that didn't help the situation. The ground line is operational and the track is approximately 90% complete. There are some sections in the back corner, which I threw together very quickly just before this Lego room overview, just so we could have it operating today. But in the back of the amusement park there, there are some tracks that need to be repaired. And also the amusement park is not complete at all. In fact, we haven't even started constructing it. However, with that said, when we get the amusement park running, there will be one more train line, which will host the Disney train and also the Hogwarts Express. And that track is about 65% complete here as well. You can see the ballast line running behind the Disney castle and the roller coaster right there. But yeah, the amusement park is sort of an eyesore right now and it's gonna look good once we get everything integrated. So in this portion of the Lego City overview, I am going to skip the amusement park. I think this is an excellent place to start right here because we've got both trains passing by Pop Culture Street. Pop Culture Street is awesome. It's one of the portions of the Lego City which I can consider to be 100% complete. We have the Ghostbusters HQ right here. All sorts of amazing stories happening on the base of the Ghostbusters HQ. Very cool. That's right across the street from the amusement park where I have the amusement park entrance, which is the Brixie Land entrance there. And that's right beside the Rebrickable model, which is an alternate build of the Disney castle. And it's known as the Disney costume shop. Beside the costume shop, we have the custom built Lego store. And right across the street, we have some custom built facades of Full House, 101 Dalmatians, and breakfast at Tiffany's, and that sits right beside my custom Peter Parker's apartment and the pizzeria. On the end of Pop Culture Street, we've got an amazing rebrickable model done by Brick Artisan. This takes a bunch of the sitcom sets and combines them into one building. There are many more floors which you can add to this building here, but I actually like the size of it. It sort of blends in well with the Lego city. Across the street from that, we've got two more mocks. We've got our Sig Fig Tower and also the hospital. And if you take a look at Pop Culture Street, there are Easter eggs everywhere, like the lady with the yellow umbrella and Joey saying, hey, how you doing? And then the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the end of the street. There are minifigures and stories all over the place, including a goat boat in the sky. Over here, we've got four privet drive beside a custom house. And on the other side of that, we've got the creator three-in-one townhouse beside changing seasons. Pop Culture Street doesn't end there. McAllister's house is up next. 
I fully mills plated the McAllister's house and removed all the snow. I don't know if I should have removed the snow. Maybe I should have kept it there and put some uh, custom snow machines making snow and making it look like, you know, it's supposed to. Next to that, we also have the Simpsons house, which is fully mills plated as well. Behind the Simpsons house, you can see Bart Simpson's treehouse, the swing, and also Maggie's sandbox. This raised platform here is uh, covered up with some custom built walls that use all sorts of arches in light gray. And there you can see our raised train line. And in front of that wall, we've got another house here, which is the hillside house. You might be wondering, how do I reach the far ends of the LEGO city? Well, I actually have three different access holes. I'm standing in the furthest one right now. And this gives me access to Pop Culture Street, the amusement park, and also this back corner here where you can see that train track that I just put together in a rough fashion there just so we can get those trains running. Also on top of the raised platform right over here, we have another rebrickable model, which is known as the Haunted Manor, and it resembles the Haunted Mansion found in Disney parks. We've talked about this section of the Lego City, which looks pretty rough, but I didn't finish with Pop Culture Street. This street right here is hustling and bustling. It is awesome. We've got the new Sanctum Sanctorum beside my custom double daily bugle. And across the street, we've got my custom massive Avengers Tower. Beside the downtown diner, and this year's BrickLink Designer Program, Bowling Alley. Take a look at the streets because there are minifigures and vehicles and tipped over bicycles absolutely everywhere. Included in those vehicles is the Mystery Machine. And then we've got Gargantos right over there with Doctor Strange and Wong. The Night Bus and another custom facade that covers up Diagon Alley, and that is 12 Grimwald Place. When you peer between the Ghostbusters HQ and the Sanctum Sanctorum, you can see Diagon Alley. Just right there. The buildings are facing each other and actually offset a little bit. I decided to expand the alleyway with some more dark gray plates. Wrapping up Pop Culture Street is a double Sesame Street. This is a rebrickable model that uses two Sesame Street sets to complete it and make it a modular building. Right across the way is my Quickie Mart. So I've taken the Quickie Mart set and I've actually mills plated it, giving it its own parking lot where you can see Chief Wiggum busted Snape. You know what though? Chief Wiggum actually has got it pretty good. It's not too bad because this guy right here is about to get it from this ice cream dude. Another detail to take note of when you're taking a look at the Lego City is the custom traffic lights that have street names. That's right, all the streets here in the city are named. For example, this one right here is Illegal Way. The raised platform looks pretty good, but it's definitely still under construction. I've got some facades placed there to represent skyscrapers, and that's right beside the Spring Lantern Festival, and also the Ninjago area, which is still under construction as well. But wow, those sets look so good. I'm glad that they're up on the raised platform because it raises them up, and you can see them from far away, which is absolutely amazing. And yeah, it's got a nice canal here. You can see the train popping out of the tunnel here, right beside the Apple Tree House, also the Modern Family Home, and a couple three-in-one houses. These old school three-in-one houses are amazing. Glad to have a few of them in the collection. Beside that tunnel where we have the dead train, I've got the Venetian houses, which is another BrickLink designer program set. Eventually I plan on sprucing up this canal here with some custom buildings. It's something that I wanna achieve in 2023. There are a lot of things that I wanna do uh, throughout 2023. I'm going to make another video going over all of my projects that I want to try and complete in 2023. One that we did in 2022 is give the Monster Fighters house an upgrade. So this is the Monster Fighters haunted house and also in front of it there is a custom graveyard. There's a really cool tree and both of those are actually combined onto one mills plate. Wait a minute, I forgot about one awesome story here on Pop Culture Street. 
And that is Taser Face right here. He's right beside the rebrickable model of the university that was actually built using the pieces from a Hogwarts castle. It's probably time for me to take Santa Claus down, but he's on top of the police station there, which is right next to the bookshop. And then also a custom Sanctum Sanctorum, which will be re-rendered one day. Another rebrickable model using the Friends Main Street set beside a different rebrickable model and yet another rebrickable model, which is the Grand Boutique Hotel. And that's beside another rebrickable model, which is a different bookshop that was built using one of the Pet Shop modular buildings. Actually, right behind the Avengers Tower, there's sort of an interesting corner there. You can see some open green base plates. I've got to fill those in. But there is a custom thing that I've built there using one of the three-in-one sets. Actually, I used two of them and a bunch of pieces from my own inventory to create a pretty neat-looking modular building. This train station right here is absolutely destroyed because I have to rebuild it so it accommodates this raised train line. It was a mock that I've had in my city for quite some time. But now with the addition of another train, I've got to build it into a different mock. So it's something I'll be doing uh, pretty quick here when we upgrade the raised train line. On the uh, boulevard right here, we've got uh, the Palace Cinema and also the Grand Emporium, some tall trees and a nicely tiled off area. And this is actually where the ground train line transitions from ballast to flexi track. This has to be cleaned up a bunch here, but then eventually makes its way onto the road and is actually nicely integrated into said road as you make your way down this street here toward the haunted house. So the Palace Cinema is right next to the Activity Center and then a few three-in-one sets that I actually mocked up into my own little mini modular buildings and they make perfect beach buildings because of course those are on the boardwalk that services the beach. The beach is pretty neat. It's got the uh, three-in-one Ferris wheel, Maui down there beside the washroom, palm trees, volleyball, all sorts of beach cabanas everywhere. There's a bar hidden right here, some lifeguards, some really nice detailed water with a wave, some swimmers, and then a sandcastle tournament right here. Also on the beach, we have the Parisian restaurant, which is a fantastic modular building. The beach looks pretty good. It's been in this state for quite some time. I do plan on doing some upgrades to it relatively soon. But one of the main sets here on the beach is definitely this one here. This is the old fishing store, a fantastic Lego Ideas set right beside a different Lego Ideas set, which is the motorized lighthouse. Flick the switch right here and that light will start spinning. I've put it here between the beach and the boatyard. And I've integrated fairly decently here, I think, with a little rock panel there. It does have a different color base plate, but I integrated as best I could with the different textures of water found on the beach here. Right beside that Parisian restaurant is a bakery that Jose created. Jose is doing great. She's taking care of kids. She hasn't had uh, a chance to build the Lego City with me that much this year. We're going to head back over to the beach there momentarily, but first let's take a look at Town Hall. It's right here. It's got a nice town square in front of it with a fountain and a bunch of trees. And then a custom rebrickable model on the side of it here. We used some instructions from rebrickable and then we also uh, varied it, just making it from our own inventory. So a bunch of modifications had to be made from it, but we used the base instructions to build this building here. It looks really good. It is actually a half base plate corner building. That's right beside the fire brigade, the brick bank, and then another rebrickable model here facing the canal, which is the Daily Press. Across the way there, we have a custom set that I built using six Heart Lake City school sets beside two of the pet shops. One is pets, one is post, and then the two townhouses that came with those sets. Right beside the Daily Press, we have my first ever modular building. This is what got me into Lego City building, everybody. It is the detective's office. Right beside the detective's office is another half corner modular building. Those two half corners do a great job of filling that space between Town Hall and allows me to center Town Hall so it's right centered with the fountain found on Town Square. So I really like the way that this whole block 
looks. It looks like all our train fun is coming to a close. Uh, I need to upgrade and get 9 volt trains. It would be so much more convenient than battery powered trains. Next to the Grand Emporium there, which was next to the Palace Cinema on the beach, there's Assembly Square, which is the largest modular building. It's next to a half base plate there, which is open. I've got to customize that up there. And then there's another rebrickable bottle, which is massive. It's two and a half base plates large, and that's the Dino's Exhibition. Right across the way from the Dino's Exhibition is the 2023 modular building, which is the Jazz Club Pizzeria. It should be a corner there, but you know what? I don't mind it there because it offers us a lot of frontage and it looks really good when you walk into the room. Next to that is the corner garage and also an alternate build of the corner garage known as the pub. So this whole area right here, that includes these open base plates beside the bakery and also the entire boatyard is still under construction. This area definitely needs some help, but it is pretty neat because the boatyard is raised up a little higher than the rest of the city using a mill plate technique. And the mill plates are actually topped with road plates, giving us this big surface here. Eventually I plan on building some buildings for this area. And also I want to retexture the water and then add details to all of these docks. But there's all sorts of cool boats and the water looks fairly decent. It's the blue plates with the trans blue one by two tiles on top. There's the large overhead crane right here. We can load some boats beside a propane bullet. And this is the town's gas station as well, found in the boat yard. But yeah, it's a pretty cool looking area there. Definitely is a lot of gray and sort of an eyesore right when you walk into the room. And I have plans in the future to upgrade this area significantly. One area that I really like is actually right beside the unfinished boat yard, and that is the farm. The farm is really nicely detailed. Got the dirt road. It's all nicely fenced off. A pumpkin patch. All the animals. The barn. Some apple trees. And then some crops. I really like the farm. It blends in perfectly with the campground, which is right next to it. The campground would be one of my favorite places if I was one of these minifigures because I absolutely love to camp. We've got a couple cabins here, a nice dirt road, which is actually built into the mills plate. So you can see some depth there and it's all nicely tiled off with uh, tiles and plates, just well detailed, that's for sure. We've got all sorts of campers everywhere, RVs, and you can see they actually have pull-in spots, which is nice. This is a huge project that we completed in 2021 and we're pretty happy with it. It looks really good. However, I think there does need to be a few more trees. I do want to build more of them and make this area a little bit more clustered with trees. One of the main attractions here at the campground is the tree house. But I think the thing that pulls all of this area together is the creek, which actually starts right over here in the Ninjago Mountain. You can see we've got the Temple of Spinjitzu on the top there. Spinjitzu or Erjitsu, I always get it confused. And it's a really nice mountain here that's fully detailed using a copious amount of slopes and bamboo and uh, plant elements. And then the uh, waterfall comes down, trickles through here, connects to the creek, which runs through the campground. There's a little bridge going over top of it there. Meanders right through by the farm, through the arches right there and into the ocean. So it really pulls this whole area together and I'm really happy with the look of that. And this mountain, I really like the look of it as well. We've got the Dojo Temple on top here. An extreme trail leading to the top there for ninjas. A little bridge going over top of that creek and then some fishing shacks. I really like the way that this area looks with the mountain, the campground, and the farm. This is one of the areas that I can consider to be completed here in the LEGO City. And of course, that's right beside the incomplete zoo. I say it's incomplete, but it is getting there. I almost finished it here in 2022, and I wish I did. But we've got our entrance, all sorts of greenery with the bushes and trees and uh, large palm trees coming off the entrance with bamboo behind the word zoo. 
You come in that entrance, there's a nice fish pond. It's well tiled off. I recently constructed that. It is going to change a little bit in the near future because all of this is not completed yet. But the animal exhibits, most of them are completed. In the back corner here, we have the lions with a tiger cub, crocodiles, ostrich and elephant and giraffe, monkeys, pandas, and a black panther. It has a raised walkway and below said raised walkway is actually glass viewing windows. The entrance to the glass viewing windows is a cave right there and that's right beside the rocky ramp which will lead you to the top viewing area. There's an aquarium inside said aquarium. There's dolphins, polar bears, penguins, and seals. The aquarium will probably be upgraded relatively soon when we finish the zoo. Over here we've got some bears with an interesting curved rock panel wall there. All sorts of interesting details including this little den. And then behind that the aviary. This is my passion project over the last little while here. I've tried to make everything a little bit different meaning each enclosure has something different, a unique custom build, whether it be a den or a tower or rock or a log or whatever it may be. And that is the zoo. It's coming along and I hope to get it done soon. So everybody, that is the Lego city. There is a ton of stories happening here and it's getting there. It's not quite complete, but I'm pretty happy with the direction that it's heading. It's got a lot of Lego sets, a lot of rebrickable models, and some custom stuff, and some trains, which is good, and I can't wait to finish working on all of these different projects. It's insane. Another large project that sort of involves the Lego City is actually the under table scenes, which have not had any attention at all lately. I have not been working on those just because I don't think they're the priority, but eventually, one day, we're gonna work on all this stuff under here. I'm not gonna go into detail of this, but there is a castle area, a train yard, and then there's going to be rotating scenes right there and also the underwater scene. Nothing under there is complete yet, but I'm really happy with how the city is turning out up top here. Mic check, mic check. Do I still have my voice? Oh my gosh, that was a lot of talking and we're not even halfway done yet, everybody. That's the Lego city. Now let's take a look at the Lego shelves. I'm actually going to start right here. Seems like a random place to start, but I think it actually makes the most sense, and you'll see why in one moment. Up top here, we have some of the Avatar sets. Tarak Maktao. I love the Avatar sets because they come with these really neat minifigures, which look awesome. I love the Avatar movie, though. I'm a huge fan of it. Also, the Tree of Souls looks pretty neat. Back in the corner there, we have a rebrickable model, which was done by Boone. And that one is a rebrickable model of the Colosseum. It's known as Castle Fortificata. In front of that, we have the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty. And then, ooh, the Razorcrest UCS. Beside the UCS Slave One. You'll note that all my minifigures are on stands. I actually recently made that change. Uh, for the most part, they're all on stands and displayed out front of their sets. Right down here, we have the Colosseum, and then it leaks into Marvel, where we have the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, some mechs, a Quinjet, Stark Jet, and then the Legend of the Five Rings dragon. Transitioning into more Marvel, there's sort of the weird-looking Avengers helicarrier here with Modoc. Ooh, Captain Marvel's missing. She's up top of the Avengers Tower, if you saw her there. A really good display set, which is Thor's hammer. Beside the awesome shield helicarrier. Oh yes, this thing looks incredible. And in front of that is Baby Groot with his cassette tape. You know what? I haven't built my nano gauntlet yet. I do have it. I don't know why it's not on display with the infinity gauntlet. Sort of weird. Next shelf up, we've got the gunship. Oh yes. The gunship looks pretty awesome, especially with its massive 501st army below it. Or on either side of it, I should say. Woo! Lots of clone troopers. 
on either side of the gunship. It looks fantastic. One of the best LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. That's the Millennium Falcon. Look at that, the UCS Millennium Falcon. Displays really well on the PAX units. These are actually wardrobes from Ikea. They're not shelving. If you're looking in the shelving area, you're not gonna find them on the website or in their store. They are in the wardrobe area. This is the Death Star playset. Now this is when you can see how it looks when I pulled out all the minifigures. Way better this way, because you can see all the figures that come with the set rather than having them buried within the set. <laughs> Take a look at this uh, 3D printed skeleton, which is right beside the grand piano. Pretty neat looking shelves right there. Woo! Those are our big PAX wardrobes. And on top, we've got the promo, which is the sailboat, the yellow submarine, the Black Panther set, some deep sea vessels, Bowser's airship, and then the Emmett's construction mech, and some party boats and friend stuff. The Flintstone set with some alarm clocks poking up from behind that. The Adidas Superstar, and then some Lego stores. Right down here, there's two awesome sets that need to find a new home. This is Metal Beard Sea Cow, and also the Black Seas Barracuda, which is the alternate build of Pirates of Barracuda Bay. Those ships are pretty cool, but so is Santa Claus. Oh my gosh, Santa, I know him! That's actually a rebrickable model. That thing is built using a ton of two by bricks. It is pretty cool. I think we built that around the holiday season in 2021. It is just massive. I've got a little Santa Claus right there for scale. So I thought it made sense to start here because this shelf has sort of leaked into Star Wars just because these are massive sets and Star Wars requires more than one massive shelf. <laughs> so you can see there's more Star Wars over here. Now we're gonna take a look at all of my Star Wars stuff. We got the Imperial shuttles up top here, the snow speeder, the side Jabba's sail barge. Ooh, I like having those figs out. That's awesome, <laughs> Jabba. And then the skiff, I believe it is. Some awesome minifigures, Boba Fett's starship beside Luke's land speeder and the UCS land speeder. The Tantive IV. Sand crawler. Then down here, the UCS B-Wing beside a really neat old school uh, Technic Darth Vader. Oh my gosh, it's the child. It's not Lego. It's one of the few things that aren't Lego in this Lego room. But right beside that, we've got some pod racers. Pretty awesome set. Acquired that this year, I think, as well. The U-Wing, Darth Maul Sith Infiltrator. The A-Wing UCS with a smaller A-Wing just behind or below that. The Death Star Final Duel. Darth Vader's Castle. Beside the Darth Vader's TIE Fighter Advanced UCS. I actually recently moved this. It looks good beside Darth Vader's Castle because you get a smaller version of the ship. Kylo Ren's shuttle right here, the good one and then the one that's not as good, and then Director Krennic Shuttle, all sort of the same wing type. Tried to pair those up with the Imperial Shuttles. Oh yes, the Star Destroyer. Woo, UCS Star Destroyer, I think it's retiring this year. And behind that is a rebrickable model of the Darth Vader Mega Figure, which uses the Darth Vader helmet. Couldn't find a better spot for him, but I think it's pretty good. He's poking up behind the Star Destroyer. And then we've got the Super Star Destroyer. <laughs> is it still the world's longest Lego set or is the Titanic longer? I think the Titanic's longer now. The TIE Bomber from 2023. The Bricker builds Darth Vader's lightsaber with my custom one hiding behind it because it's no good compared to that one. The UCS Imperial Shuttle. I would love to have this with the wings in flying position, but unfortunately I just don't have the display space. But that's beside the 2005 Death Star, 
we need to get a new one like this. I was saying like there should be one that's like three feet by three feet with all the greveling. That would look awesome. I also recently moved all of my stormtroopers below it. Looks really good. Could you imagine though, if there was one that was like three feet by three feet, all greebled? Woo, that would be so cool. Make it the largest Lego set of all time. Why not? It deserves it. <laughs> We've got the UCS TIE Fighter beside Betrayal at Cloud City, which comes with another Slave 1. Also the Twin Pod Cloud Racer, I believe it is. And then all of its minifigures out front. Holy smokes, so many minifigures. All from that set. So wild. Now on the top of the shelf over here, we've got the buildable figures. Hop on my stool here. That's Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Boba Fett, Jango Fett, Darth Maul, Chewbacca, Obi-Wan, Han Solo, Stormtrooper Commander, Clone Commander Cody, uh, General Grievous, Kylo, First Order Stormtrooper, Poe Dameron, Finn, and then my favorite one on the end here, which is the Scout Trooper on the speeder bike. And in front of those are all my TIE Fighters, which look really good. I love how the characters are just popping up behind them or the figures. I love that display. That section just looks awesome. <laughs> and you know what? It doesn't end there. There's more Star Wars right over there. This shelf right here has all my smaller stuff, like the X-Wings, General Grievous' Starfighter, some Jedi Starfighters, the Clone Tank, all the Micro Fighters. There are a lot of Micro Fighters here now. I don't have the full collection, which is too bad. You really need to have the full collection of Micro Fighters. But there are a couple shelves of them there. Some snow speeders. Oh, there you go. Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter with hyperdrive with some scarce figures like that Django. All sorts of neat sets there. It's not my favorite Star Wars shelf, but there's definitely some good ones. Next to that, we've got my absolutely huge army of 8080s. Oh yes, there are many different users there. There are actually only two identical ones. These two here are identical, but that was actually the first Lego set that I ever got, so I like it. And I like having multiple of those. I think they look really good on the same shelf. And there's all the minifigures for those sets. In front, of course, the Castle Run Millennium Falcon, which is actually surprisingly a really good set that I like. A couple more Millennium Falcons. This one here is from The Force Awakens. And then this is the newest one at this scale right here from whatever that last movie was called. I'm sorry, I've been talking for a long time and I can't remember. And then the Mandalorian Starfighter and then all of our Mandalorian stuff. So you got the Mandalorian Starfighter, then the Razor Crest, the Imperial Armored Marauder, Mar Marauder the uh, Forge, the Imperial Light Cruiser, the Dark Trooper Attack. Probably could have left those many figures, I guess in their play stance. Then the uh, Star Destroyer on the bottom here, and then the ATM-6. R2-D2, 20th Anniversary Slave 1, Probe Droid, uh, BD-1, the newer R2, Yoda and Yoda's lightsaber. There we go. She rebuilt that using the instructions. Hold my other one. Replace the uh, Name tile with a minifigure? Why not? Then we got Grogu, the Porg, BB-8, and Dio. All my walkers, lots of them. ATST walkers. Ooh, also the uh, frigate. That's a scarce set. San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, I think. Then the large Star Wars UCS ATAT -AT walker. Woo! It's actually full of. Uh, Troopers inside too. I think we can just open it up. Oh, there's the bikes. Yeah, it's full of troopers in there. <laughs> Snow troopers. It's not completely full, but we're getting there. Snow speeder, a vintage one at its feet there. These Star Wars dioramas. Dagobah, trench run, trash compactor. UCS Y-Wing. Oh yes, a great one. Thick greebling on that. It's crazy. Layers of it. Darth Vader's meditation chamber and pretty much a couple open shelves there.
Above all that, we have the helmet collection. The missing Vader is on that mega figure. Batman, Dark Troopers, AT, sorry, uh, TIE Fighter Pilot, Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Luke, Venom, The Mandalorian, Iron Man, and Minions! Banana! There's some more Star Wars stuff right here. Look at this. We've got the Moss Eisley Cantina. That one there has so many figures. Not really too happy the way it's displayed. It demands a huge shelf, but I like the fact that all the figures are on display because that's one of the, you know, star components of that set. Below that, we've got the UCS Red 5. And then the Ewok Village here. Play set. And then Spaceship! It's Benny's Spaceship. And all of that's actually right below the Winter Village. The Winter Village was definitely a passion project of mine here in 2022. Wanted to get it done, and I think I got it done in a pretty good way. I like how there's lots of different heights with the builds and like the hills, the mountain, or cliff edge rather, Christmas tree in the center, cave to skate through with a hidden wampa inside, all sorts of details and storytelling. Hogsmeade, the trolley or tram, cobblestone road, it's sort of like a broken road. The slopes are just sitting in there loosely. Christmas lights strung from light to light. Santa's visit to Gingerbread House, Holiday Main Street, Winter Village Fire Station. Of course, the Santa's Workshop, the Elf Clubhouse, Santa Claus flying away for the night. Pretty neat passion project, and I'm glad we got it done in 2021. And I can't wait to see what we do with this surface here as we move forward, because eventually this is going to transition to the under table scenes. There's the platform that the uh, Winter Village sits on. Right down here, we've got some more Christmas holiday sets. Also the Cat D11, and then some open shelves, and another gingerbread house. And we have a custom built brick head display. We built this using bricks and plates. I think it displays them quite well and actually conserves a lot of space. They're all grouped by theme. And there's some new ones that are gonna be coming out in 2023 that we're gonna to have to add to this collection here. So eventually we're gonna to have to build another one of our custom brick head displays. And they are going to go right down to the base here where we currently have the Fender guitar. My Lego book collection, next to the Lego house promo and two really cool exclusive keychains. Oh yes, I love that one there. Very awesome. Got a little bit of Harry Potter stuff here, but there's still some more shelves that host more Harry Potter sets and those are actually over above my desk. Oh, here's the new Galaxy Explorer for the 90th anniversary of Lego beside the tiger and then some Mario characters, and our Mario shelf, which has the Nintendo Entertainment System, some cool figures like Toad, Pikachu, which is actually a Mega Construct set, decided to put it here on the Nintendo shelf. Got the question mark block, Bowser, and then some Disney stuff up top here, like the XL15 from Buzz Lightyear, Zerg, Buzz Lightyear, Olaf, the mini Disney castle, Steamboat Willie, and then this mini little skyline here for Disney World. Another Disney set that I do not have shelf space for right now is Elsa's Frozen Ice Castle, and another holiday set that I don't have space for is the Nutcracker. This was a Lego employee set, and the only way you could get it is if you worked at the Lego store. I parted it out on BrickLink, ordered the pieces, and built it for a reasonable price. The T-Rex Breakout Diorama, above the Bricker Builds Dinosaur Eggs, the Ecto-1 and Wally with Tron, the Typewriter and the DeLorean, and then some Batmobilia, Batman sets, like the Joker's Lowrider coming up here. I'd probably be willing to maybe part with these sets here to 
get one larger set, but they do look pretty good. I like the suspension on Joker's Lowrider. <laughs> they come with some really cool minifigures as well. We got the Flying Fox on the bottom here, and then the Speed Wagon beside a pretty neat uh, Bat Cave right here. Comes with some awesome figures. All on display there. Then our large Batmobiles, which are awesome. We've got large and small Batmobiles, I guess. All sorts of them. I like this tumbler right here. It was a really good set from last year. Two tumblers that pretty much look the same, but they are different. And then the awesome 1989 Batmobile promo and the 1989 Batmobile right above that with the 1989 Batwing mounted above it. That shelf looks pretty good. All the DC stuff. There's one more DC Batmobile, and that's right up top here. That's the Technic one from The Batman. And that's right beside our flowers, which are right here. And then the brick sketches on the very end. These two shelves are essentially all vehicles. They've got some Volkswagens on the top there. Punch buggy, no returns. <laughs> then the uh, Mini Cooper, the Fiat 500, two of them. Ooh, my signs are swapped. There you go, gotcha. Then also the uh, Mustang, Porsche, uh, Countach, which is actually an alternate build of the Porsche. Same with the uh, Ford GT500. Holy smokes, that took me a while to remember. The Ford GT500, then the Camaro, the Ferrari, the Aston Martin, Vespa, Ducati, Harley Davidson, all of the speed champions, like there are lots of them. There's actually six shelves of speed champions. They're <laughs> a pretty big product line that I enjoy. Nice little builds that display well. Use interesting building techniques. Are affordable. And I don't know, I'm just sort of addicted to collecting them. <laughs> I've actually got to build the ones that came out this year and the new one that's coming out on January 1st, which has to do with Fast and the Furious. Got some more vehicles on the bottom there. And then the uh, farm truck, the Wrangler, and the supercars, the Ferrari, Daytona SP3, the CN, the Bugatti, the Porsche. The Porsche, the cheaper, smaller one. <laughs> it's out there, an RC truck. And then the Ferrari, along with the Ford Raptor, and then Dom's Dodge Charger. So that's all the sets in this section of the shelving, but there's actually more sections of shelving. So yeah, we've got more to take a look at, but first let's just have a brief look at our staircase here where we have all sorts of art, including the Sith art, Iron Man art, the Brixy wall sign, which was a custom built wall sign. It used to be on the wall and I used to have a Lego wall in the room there, but I just ran out of space and had to use that wall for sets. But at least I still have that as you come down the stairs here. And then up top we have the Joker and Harley, some custom art ones there, and of course the Hogwarts crest. Recently, I purchased this from Amazon. It's a massive air purifier that helps manage the dust here in the Lego room. Just above that, I have the periodic table of Lego colors. Some awesome VIP artwork. A vintage Brixy name plaque. This awesome fan-made art that was sent to me when I hit 100,000 subs. And this awesome thing here from London that was sent to me by a fan as well. Just around the corner from that, we've got the world map, which is technically the world's largest Lego set. I've got some shelves on the bulkhead here as well. Uh, there is some Mega Constructs, Halo stuff. I'm a huge fan of Halo. I wanna build that stuff there. And there's some smaller uh, sets there, like some promos, the boom box, a really old set known as Majesto's Tower, and then some Bionicle. The other large shelves that we have are actually right over here by my desk, and these host some amazing sets like the ISS, the Saturn V, the Space Shuttle Discovery, Bonsai Tree, uh, Blacksmith, Arkham Asylum, the Upside Down, some Ninjago, or a Ninjago boat, Pirate Ship, the best set of the year, the 2022 Lion Knight's Castle for the 90th anniversary of LEGO. 
T-Rex Rampage, the large Jurassic Park gate, Mickey and Minnie beside Optimus Prime. And then some of the best sets in the room are right over here. In fact, I think the best set in the room. It's right above my desk, the Titanic, which I think is the longest Lego set in the room, or of all time, that is. Beside the Hogwarts icons, Vincent Van Gogh, Ship in the Bottle, the Jazz Quartet, the Crocodile Locomotive, the Hogwarts Castle, and just behind that, the Tower of Orthanc, the massive Hogwarts Express, all of the gold figures, had to have those, and then the Boeing Dreamliner, the Globe, and all of these Harry Potter sets, including the buildable figures. So pretty awesome sets to have here above my parts inventory in my office area. The shelf above my desk here is just a bunch of stuff that needs to be parted out, sorted, dealt with, integrated into the city or shelves, placed in the city, etc. It's like a graveyard of stuff. Right here we have all of my minifigures. I want to better sort these moving forward, but there are a lot of great minifigures here from Marvel, DC, Simpsons, CMF series, Harry Potter, Muppets, Looney Tunes, and so many more. Uh, I haven't had a chance to re-render this area, but you can see my desk sort of runs into them and then they creep down the wall. Definitely need to rethink this entire area here and get something going a little bit better there just to better display those figures and some of the awesome stuff found on this wall. Right behind me, we have all of my parts. I don't want to spend too long on my parts, but everything is sorted by part type, everybody. Uh, whether it be plates, panels, bricks, and all different colors as well. So everything is sorted according to that and also by part type as well, whether it be brackets, snot bricks, cylinders, studs, inverted slopes, regular slopes, arches, bamboo, <laughs> uh, Technic stuff, bars and poles and string elements. So yeah, everything's sorted by part type and by color, just sort of what makes sense to me. And that's where all the parts are. Got my desk here with my computer and my uh, TV. Got to watch some flicks or watch some hockey. And then down here is all my supplies. Just office stuff, filming equipment, all that. And then some overflow parts over here, which is big bulky stuff like train track and some more office style stuff in those drawers over there. These are all custom built tables. And that's something else we did in 2022, as I discussed earlier, completely rebuilt the city on new tables in a new mills plate fashion. And yeah, it's looking really good. This is the Lego room as of 2022, well, the end of it, moving into 2023. It's been a while since we've done a Lego room overview. I think lots has changed since the last time we've done one. Let me know what you think of our Lego room by commenting below. Thank you so much for coming on by. I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see where 2023 brings us. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. So thank you so much for the views, comments, and positive vibes. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Farewell.